Oh boy, oh boy, welcome to another episode of the Josh Potter Show. If you're watching this on the day it comes out on this Wednesday, I want to say thank you to all of the people who were at uh, the shows in upstate New York, whether it be uh, the handful in Poughkeepsie. I mean, that was a small but mighty crowd. The roaches in Poughkeepsie uh, were a lot of fun. Saratoga Springs, if you came out there, thank you too. I don't understand why people, they take pictures with you and then they don't tag you in them. It makes me feel like a loser. But nevertheless, I had a good time. And uh, as far as live shows go, I got the Comedy Store here in Los Angeles, June 20th. Annie Wood and Friends, I believe is what it's called. Annie Letterman's doing her first and Friends show over at the old uh, Comedy Store there in the main room. And uh, it's a hell of a lineup. I'm also going to be with her this weekend in Salt Lake City. And then at the end of the month, I'll be with her in San Antonio. So lots of Josh and Annie action going on for the rest of uh, June here. Other than that, please to be sending in your music the way Odd Track Numbers sent this guy on joshpottershow at gmail.com. It's where you can also send in your articles and whatever else. Just tell me how you're doing. I like to hear from you out there. And also make sure you uh, subscribe to the Patreon. We're getting some people on board, and I'm trying out new things all of the time on the Patreon. So please to be coming over there. And and when I say all of the time, I mean I'm just starting to try some new things. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So come see what's up. Five bucks a month. Other than that, rate, review, subscribe. Great guest today, a favorite amongst those of you who stay here at the Roach Motel. You know her from her podcast, Shank, and this bitch with Kim Congdon and herself. It is Sarah Wineshank, ladies and gentlemen. Hi! Perhaps the front runner for the Chase O'Donnell Award, yes. guest of the yes. year. Yes, <laughs> mommy's back, honey. She's back. I and you were here in April, and we love having you. So I'm so happy it's you could favorite, be here. My favorite. It's one of my favorite shows to do. I thought you were going to introduce me when you said Sarah Toga because it sounded like Sarah, <laughs> <laughs> and I almost like interrupted. And I was like, okay, cool. Good thing I didn't. <laughs> Sarah Toga. Ah, yeah, I'm here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> threw me off to be honest. And can we say? Uh, are we allowed to say? Yeah, I think we can say. Mama has been passed at the comedy store. She's Yay. getting her name on the wall. Yay! Yay! Yay. Hooray! Finally. I don't have any, like, fun celebratory sounds. Idiot I just woman realized. would yeah. be perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 I put it down to you, though. Idiot woman, why'd you choose comedy? <laughs> it should have happened sooner. Can't uh, abide such idiocy any longer. Right? No, I don't well, I feel, I feel really happy that it just, that it's happened. No, I'm happy for you. That's very exciting. I was having a sort out of body experience when she told me that I got passed. And you went and celebrated and everything? Yeah, as much as I can. Yeah, you know mom. How, I'm an indoor cat. I was there the <laughs> night that you did your showcase and it was elect it was a fun night. It was an electric night. I feel like everybody was there. Yeah. It was quite the night. And then uh I think, you know, 11.30 maybe rolled around. I don't know what time it was, but it was, I gotta go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happens with me. And then everyone, there was like a whole night after you left. There's always a whole night after I leave. I heard you talking with Ian Fidance on your podcast about it, and he mentioned everyone, even people he couldn't remember their names, he mentioned w were at the diner with him except for me which I thought was funny because he was like, there were people, I don't know, this guy, Hank. No, no. But then I was like, oh, Ian, didn't remember I was there? No. Bummer, bro. <laughs> <laughs> remember some guy you can't, you don't know who he is? But no, no. There's no right. way Ian would forget that you're there. He forgot. Called out. I don't care about that. Not a fig. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm, I'm, I think I might be moving closer to society. Yeah, you got to get out of the mountains, especially now that you got your name on the, the wall. The woods. Yeah, come out from the cabins. And uh, <laughs> I mean, Sarah, she has to, every time she drives anywhere, it's like the beginning of Indiana Jones. <laughs> I mean, it is like through mountains, there's boulders following her. <laughs> it's not, you're not wrong. Like, I'm <laughs> it's all, every crazy. time I leave my house, there's a chance I could just. You could drive off, off a cliff, cliff at any moment. One errant text message buzzes and you go, ooh, and I'm then like you're this. off the road. It's, the stakes are so high in that area that I'm like this. And, and then another car could come the other direction and it's like, 
a game of chicken. It's what? insane that let's you just, drive that let's every just day. Be positive because I just have a little bit of t- more time there, and then I'm gonna. Oh, you're you're an expert. You're a pro at it at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how you. I do don't want to jinx nighttime. it. I'm like knocking on tables, getting all weird and OCD, blessing myself and <laughs> shit. Well, you're here on an important day. Yes. What today is, is a very important day. What's today? Uh, I wish I had my breaking news uh, sound here. Beep, 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 beep. Taylor Swift has broken up with Matt Healy. Already? It's official. Is that the guy from 1975? It sure is. The guy that kisses everybody. Wait, what <laughs> do you mean he girls? kisses everybody? That's the whole thing with him. The Swifties were up in arms. Because he's bisexual? He's, well, no, because he's evidently was you know reportedly allegedly some could deem Uh that he was forcing these kisses on people but it was like they're at the concert to see him and obviously they wouldn't be upset about kissing him i wouldn't imagine whether it be and he was kissing dudes he He was was kissing girls all kinds of people was kissing days he's kissing thems (laughs) he's kissing all kinds of people but they broke up and I, uh, I just, I don't know why I thought I got high this morning. Yeah. And I was like, wouldn't it be just hilarious if she just dated me? No. <laughs> <laughs> like, how wild would that be? If it was just like, yeah, I'm dating Taylor Swift. She actually wrote a song about me. <laughs> Imagine Taylor Swift writes yeah. a song about you. Oh, I mean, that would be so dope. I mean, that's the best part about dating a comic is the joke deluge that comes. You go, that's me. Well, I think that's dude, great. That... Do you have jokes out there written about you? Um, I'm sure. I've You're wronged sure. many men. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> I've wronged many men. No, I've only dated a couple comics. That's more than me. I've never I've only I've dated one. I've only dated one comic and that was enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> I said that'll do it. I'm going to send you I want to send you a a a thing here Kirsten that is going around about Taylor Swift uh on the heels of all of this. Uh, let's see. How should I? Didn't send she just to airdrop you? it to me? But wait, didn't she just end her other relationship to be with this fucking guy? Or did I make that up? I'm gonna have to email it. I um, yeah, no, I. She ended a relationship with like a guy that looked like a uh, British royalty or something. He was like a completely different guy, and I kind of understand that move by Taylor Swift. She had like that long term relationship with that guy who was very handsome and British and quiet and rich and then she's like i'm gonna slum it with this rock star guy who's kissing everybody his mouth is a sewer he smokes (laughs) cigarettes boy i am sorry if you're if you're watching out there folks i am not on cocaine i am just sweating profusely for whatever reason (laughs) uh in the studio today but yeah that like people are gonna see and be like is josh on meth you don't seem like you're on meth i am literally sweating down my the sides of my face do you feel okay no, I feel great. I'm just okay. hot. I just get. Do you want to take off your hoodie? I would if I wasn't <laughs> shirtless underneath it. <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get us pulled off YouTube. <laughs> Although well, I did. In ten I, minutes, you can. I did over the weekend, for in honor of Pride Month, I opened up my cameo again. Big announcement. Oh, I wasn't. I forgot shit. to say that at the beginning of the show. Yes, I've opened it up. If you want your shoulder hair porn once again. <laughs> you get on Cameo, and there I am. I'm doing it. I'm back. I've He's already got back. two requests I've got to fulfill, and uh, I'm excited to do just that. So get on there if you want to get something just in time for Father's Day. Or Gay Pride. There you, there you go, right there. Uh, Give I e- the, bear in your, uh, <laughs> the bear in your life the gift of Potter's shoulders. Yeah, I think it's a perfect Father's Day present. Uh, yes. So make sure, even you, whether your father's gay or straight, we're going to make them one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but did you get that uh, email I sent you? Because uh, this is like insane. The Taylor Swift fans are upset. Well, they're not. I think they're they're just constantly upset. And I don't want any smoke with the Taylor Swift fans. No, we don't want to piss off the Swifties. I've seen what you've done out there to people <laughs> on the internet, and I want no part of it. I'll tell you right now, I want to be on your team. I want to get on your side. If I can champion your cause here, I'm going to try my best. I think they're just always upset with what Taylor's got wait, going on. Wait, wait. So they're deciding to unionize. I'll read the, these slides this that they put out. This is evidently real. This is insane real. thing 
Well, wait I till have I have ever heard. Wait till you read it here. I so wish the Shanksters would unionize. <laughs> no, you don't. I don't think you want them to. Because oh, listen sorry, to this. Fans do the vast majority of promotion and marketing for Taylor Swift without being compensated. What? They're looking for money. Yet we, the fan workers, <laughs> they're not fan workers. They're fans. Still have no formal bargaining power in the musical direction <laughs> or brand identity of the celebrity we collectively created. They created this celebrity. <laughs> Wait, the, what? This is as far as I know. I've tried to do so. This just came out today. People are reacting very severely. This is evidently real. This now, is- if by the time this episode comes out, it's found out to be fake, don't rake me over the coals, folks. <laughs> all right? I'm trying my best out here. This is all kind of fluid and in real time. The Dude. Taylor Swift fan union offers fan workers the ability to collectively bargain <laughs> for a creative vision of Taylor Swift that better aligns with our shared values. The TSFU, the no, Taylor Swift family, no, no. Al- also demands the recognition of our labor through compensation and health benefits. <laughs> she almost died. Health benefits? <laughs> we bitch. almost lost her with health benefits. <laughs> bitch, I don't have health benefits. No one does. I mean, I pay for them. <laughs> Not no one does. <laughs> I, pay, I pay an obscene amount of money, I feel like, yes. in order to have health benefits. And I don't... Look at me. Is it benefiting anything? <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my God, dude. This it is... It gets worse. Recently, many fan workers were harmed by Taylor's unilateral decision to date an alt-right <laughs> extremist. This is referring to Matt Healy. Is he without on? union consul- consultation this now i'm starting this is when i read this i go this can't be real well he's definitely not all right if he's making out with men that that's the thing he's definitely not all <laughs> right <laughs> he's in a band like it's, a rock band it's because he says you know i don't know wild shit from time to time that's <laughs> like they would think i'm all right you know what i mean yeah. Because I play like something like uh, the inner city blacks you sound idiot drop. Woman. <laughs> yeah, they're like alt right. They would think that. The TSFU unequivocally stands against hate and will work towards a future where this kind of workplace violence never happens again. Now, workplace violence? Now they're I'm, calling her okay. personal life workplace <laughs> fucking violence. That's so crazy. I'm starting to think it's fake now. It has to be fake. It, it goes on, like, because there's another, because uh, there's, like, a thread here. Look at this. A seat at the table. This is where it gets crazy. As fan workers. Oh, this is where it gets crazy. <laughs> As fan workers who've dedicated countless hours to studying and constructively criticizing Taylor's celebrity, we are uniquely well positioned to offer creative suggestions for her career moving forward. Who better than fan workers to determine what fan workers want and need? The TSFU also seeks remuneration for previously uncompensated promotional labor. This includes fan workers' fair share of revenue for album sales, streams, merchandise, concert tickets, none of which would be possible without the labor of Taylor Swift fan union. This, this, is, this has got to be fake. Is this fake? Because here's the thing. This is, I've seen actual Taylor Swift, like, you know, what do they call them? Swifties? Swifties, yeah. I was going to call them Taylor stands. That would have been the wrong thing to call them. I've seen them react very poorly to this, being like, anybody who thinks this is not a real Swifty, so maybe this is trolling the Swifties. I'm not, I'm not ruling that out if you're at home watching this and you've already found out that this is fake. And I also, by the way, am not ruling out the fact this could very well be real. I feel like the people... The true Swifties are so fucking far gone. I like Taylor. Here's the hey, thing. Hey, she said that, folks. Here's the thing. Hey, Swifties. <laughs> I, that was wait, one Sarah Wine shake. I, I, okay, here's the thing, Swifties. I like Taylor Swift, but not enough to unionize. <laughs> well, that's what, I mean, It is if it is a troll job against the Swifties, they do get a little bit, what's the word? I don't know. To the point where you go, are you making the music? Are you the reason? You know, like they do take up some sort of like piece of it, a self-serving aspect of it. 
Yeah, the <clears throat> Swifties are on another level. What do we find in Kirsten? I see you pulled up an I, article of some kind from the Mirror. No, I just looked up Taylor Swift earlier, and apparently she's also cursing the NBA playoffs. And I was just curious what that was about. Oh, I see. Well, that's a so, good uh, a good segue into the next. And let me just see if this union thing has any other yeah, I don't know. wild thing. Many fan workers are still processing the trauma. Again, now <laughs> there are little things that make me go, "This is such." This is such a troll job. There are many fan workers who are still processing the trauma of Taylor's association with the alt-right despite her previous commitment to uh, the BIPOC. What is that? Uh, People of color? Bi people of color? Uh, Black indigenous people of color. Oh, I just thought it was bisexual (laughs) people of color. I can see uh, why. (laughs) Oh, my Lord. They really... See, now this is another reason why I think it's fake, too. Why? Because they put in all of the letters for LGBTQIAA25 or... (laughs) <laughs> no. Or 2S plus. Don't it, there's a 2 in there? What the fuck is that? What does that even mean? Do any of you know the rest of the letters? I know 2 is probably 2 spirit. What? What? What the fuck is 2 spirit? <laughs> Alex, what, what does the that fuck mean? is 2 spirit? Uh, that what? is uh an indigenous term uh that it, I I will not speak too much on only because <laughs> I, because I'm too <laughs> ignorant, I'm too ignorant to really know, but I know it's it's something uh based off <laughs> Two S plus indigenous <laughs> individuals who are both feminine and uh, <laughs> masculine. Wow! I love when the I love when educating someone on something. You're like, I'm not the guy to do it because I will fucking. <laughs> Whoa! It's, it's Pride Month, guys. I'm not trying to have my card taken away. Dude, dude, it's Pride Month. It's everything. Oh my god! You're right. My it god. is a. It's too spirited. My I, glasses are fogging up. It is this. lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, tar- transsexual, queer, questioning, intersexual, asexual, and too spirited. Okay. I thought that had something to do with I religion. Thought, I'm I honestly like, thought. Never mind. I'm not even going to say it. Say it. Sister. I don't want to be in. I don't want to piss off the. The, the Swifties gay. are already coming after you. Might as well get the gays. Double down. I thought like if you say too. queer, it's kind of all encompassing in a way. Well, like that's what I—I I mean. Well, that, you well, used to not be able. I to guess say that's queer. ignorant to say that. No, I'm just—I don't know because <laughs> you would think it just cut. Yeah, a one word would cover all the bases, but then you know we got to have a bunch of different words, I suppose. And then they still have the plus sign, so there's even letters they didn't even put in there. Ugh, it's so much to this keep is the, up with. This is the last part, real quick. By joining the United Musicians and Allied Workers, the TSFU looks to become the first formally recognized fan union in history, revolutionizing labor relations between fan workers and the celebrities they've labored to create. Now is our moment to end exploitation and create equitable representation for Swifties everywhere. That is wild. I can't tell what's parody anymore. These are people in the tweets that are just like, Please tell me this is fake. And people are like, this is not fake. This is real. So I don't know. I mean, I do feel like there's like a level of, like I said before, I hate to come for you Swifties, but I feel like it's like a lot of like the energy is like sorority girls who are like, we (laughs) need to have like a voice. Well, it's not enough to be a fan of Taylor Swift. You have to take credit for her abilities. (laughs) That's crazy. That feels like the opposite of what a fan should do. Yeah, well, I mean, I guarantee that. I mean, I don't even know what to think. It, you know, AI exists now. Who knows? AI could have made this. We're all living in a fucking AI could have made this whole show today. You know, it's all could be <laughs> fake for all I know. I could get duped on a thousand things. Today's Josh Potter show is brought to us by Mint Mobile. And boy, oh boy, inflation is on the rise. Everything costs an arm and a leg. Remember when you could just get eggs? Now you got to take out a mortgage. It's unbelievable. Budgeting is getting harder by the day. So don't let your phone bill push your spending over the edge. Mint Mobile has phone plans starting at just $15 a month. So you can save money without sacrificing what you love. That's because Mint Mobile's got like all the stuff too. It's got unlimited talk, text, internet. I mean, it's like every other phone plan that you would buy that's more expensive, but it's $15 a month. I got to tell you, it's just... uh. Saving me all kinds. Of, I got two phones now because I because uh, I got one for my uh, my mother. I got one for myself. Fifteen bucks a month. I, I'll get you a phone bill. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? By doing everything totally online, by the way, Mint Mobile has cut the traditional cost of retail. That's how they can give it to you so cheap. And they pass the savings straight to you. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data, as I mentioned, on the nation's largest 5G network. And you can keep your own phone. Keep the same number 
all the existing contacts. Nothing changes except for how much you're going to end up saving. So right now, to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped right to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash potter. That's mintmobile.com slash potter. You can cut your wireless bill to $15 a month all at mintmobile.com slash potter. But you know what thing I do know about? What? That's sports. Thank God. Thank God for sports. Oh, beep, yeah. beep, 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 beep. And with that, did we find out how Taylor Swift cursed the NBA playoffs? That's the headline in sports today. How did Taylor Swift curse the NBA finals? What? Did she fuck a nugget? (laughs) That's such a funny question. (laughs) Did she fuck a nugget? Or did she fuck a heat? Fucking a nugget sounds more fun. Fucking a um, nugget. No, I think it's saying that like where she has traveled to on her tour when she's in that city, that team loses. Interesting. I mean, she was just in Chicago and Chicago's Soldier Field has such field problems, like grass problems already. And everyone was like, oh my God, this they might as well just bulldoze the whole stadium after Taylor Swift is there because it's going to be atrocious. Well, we wanted to, the reason I asked was because our first story does involve basketball. It involves uh, uh, Charles Barkley. I've been sleeping on this for far too long. The man is hilarious. He might be the most funny broadcaster in the history of time. And uh, I've missed out because I don't watch enough basketball. And so these NBA finals I've been watching. I've been watching the, the I watch usually the conference finals and then the finals themselves because I'm a gambler. And boy, oh, boy, fade me on NBA picks because I can't get one to save my life right now. Uh, but anyhow. Uh, This is after this is Derek White of the Celtics. Yes. And this is after they lost the series to the Miami Heat. Of course, he's doing a press conference and uh, Charles Barkley has something to say about Derek White. Let's watch it. A good job of having good spacing, um, letting them do what they do. And when my opportunity's there, I just got to attack and do what I do. Six points in this one. Eleven out of 16 from the floor. Two out of five. (laughs) Yes, sir. Captain Ernie, that, sir. Is that, that, is that Derek White or Stephen A? <laughs> Damn, Derek. <laughs> we love you, Stephen I, A. I join you in the head shake. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. <laughs> Damn, Stephen A. Stephen no, A play for the Celtics. He, 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 he do first take in the morning and play for the He's uh He's comparing him, folks, to Stephen A. Smith, if you don't already know. He's a guy on ESPN. Very famous commentator. That's is, his hairline. Dude, what is up with that, though? It's like commit to going bald. Yeah, or just you know? wear hats like me every day. I mean, fuck it. I agree with fuck it. Why try to save what's what's trying to go? I think they just have big foreheads, though. He has a lot of hair and just a big forehead. He's probably had that hairline the whole time. And maybe it's the headband. Uh-oh. You just showed the headband picture of him on the Spurs. It's like he's got a permanent headband on. Why wear a headband he when it's already back there? Because he's like... I got to keep the hair out of my eyes. It's already <laughs> way back there, friend. You've got nature's headband. Maybe that's why he does... <laughs> do you think he like shaved... Do you, okay, is it because he's balding or is he shaving it back? So I it think he just has a, out of his eyes. No, he has a big forehead. He's not even balding. That's not it's, like a that's not a, a, a receding hairline. Can situation. I tell you what I'm the vibe I'm getting? Coneheads. <laughs> it's giving conehead energy. Like what is happening? Like Dan Aykroyd coneheads? Yeah, you know. I uh conehead. I mean the coneheads didn't have hair. Well, yeah, but like same forehead. <laughs> There's a scene this is a core memory. I saw coneheads in the drive in when I was very little. I want to rewatch. And I think I got like my <laughs> first boner or one of the first no, ones. No, during Conan's. When they like, when the Conehead makes out with the, with Chris Farley. No, that is the craziest Did you just find thing. the origin story to why you can't come? Maybe. I got to find it. <laughs> I got to get my tongue sucked by a Conehead. <laughs> Wait, what? You got hard for a Conehead? I think I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. I remember that this that memory. It's just a core memory you've unlocked. What's this do for you? I mean, nothing really. Who was the daughter? Who the... <laughs> they look like penises. Michelle Burke. Michelle Burke. What else is she in? Uh, Dazed and confused. Oh yeah. 
No wonder. She is a babe. Oh, my God. Coneheads. I wasn't planning on getting into coneheads today. <laughs> no, but you were did. You? S- well, not Not at all. But, <laughs> but when it comes to Derek White, I mean, they were so they were trashing his hairline. They were comparing him to Stephen, Stephen A. Smith. What else did they say about him? Didn't they say something else? Or Shaq might have. Shaq and Charles Barkley, by the way, are like a comedy team. It's like fucking Abbott and Costello. It's hilarious. Keep I love going. that. 25 points a game in the series. 25 a game. And here are these guys Isaac. going like this. That's all about Isaac. Yeah. But you know what the crazy part about that is? <laughs> what? Yeah, he comb it like that. He comb it like that? No, no, the crazy he's talking, part about that. He's talking about the crazy part about Derek White's game is. <laughs> he's a hell that could be Malcolm Brogdon. Next game. They, that could they be what? Malcolm Brogdon doing the same exact thing that he's done. Like, they have two guys that... Have this dude's advantage. trying to talk As about basketball. It's so fine. funny. Bum, 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 bum. Oh. A hairline like mine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, man. I, I get what you're saying. Hey, man. Y'all act like y'all didn't notice that. I get what you're saying, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen Derek White ever yeah. in your life. Yeah, I've never like, seen it like that. <laughs> like, uh, it looks like <laughs> that. That's you know, he's never seen it. He always has a headband on. You made the same headband joke I did. Oh boy, they're great. I mean, they're not. They're poor, poor other guys trying to talk about basketball, and they're like f- laughing. And he's like, "Well, I guess I'm not going to be doing that at all anytime soon." <laughs> but what did you say, Kirsten, before the show? You said he looks like a what? I just said that he looks like a Wii character. The Wii character. He looks AI generated for sure. And Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no. What? What were you going to say? I was going to say once Kirsten pointed that out. You knew immediately about the Wii characters because? <laughs> because I waited overnight at a, some type of, lo- I think it was Best Buy, mm-hmm. to get Wii for an X. Now, alone? <laughs> you just went out there? <laughs> yes. And pitched a, like a tent? <laughs> what, did you have a no, chair? No, I showed up to Best Buy at like four in the morning. Was it Black Friday? It wasn't Black Friday, but it was around that time. It was holiday adjacent. And mommy said, get me a Wii. For, and it was the day the Wii came lover. out? <laughs> what? It was the day the Wii came out? No, it wasn't the day the Wii came mm. out. But it was like a f- couple weeks after when it was still hard to get. And that's not the first or the last. De- that was the first time, but not the last time. Well, hold on. Hold on. Pump the brakes here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, because I mentioned that my roommate did that. My roommate, the day the um Wii came out, my roommate at the time, my buddy Dave, he did that. He slept overnight and he came home with the Wii and we had the best day. But you said, then you're like, I did that for an ex-boyfriend. Now, did Two he- Two appre- ex-boyfriends. I cannot, bu- did he appreciate that? I'm Okay, first of all, let's just stay on the one because we'll get to the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Am I proud of it? No. So tell me, what did you pack? Snacks? You stayed out there at four <laughs> in the morning. Obviously, okay, you don't live in- I lived in Buffalo at the time, so it was like I lived when in you stay Orange out. County. Yeah, so it's not like you were in the elements. You weren't in the snow, uh, waiting for. To me, Best being up in the four in the morning is being in the elements. What Josh. What gave you the idea to get up at four in the morning to get the Wii? Did he plant this seed in your head? Like no, because I knew what was going on. I'm like a cool hip girl. I, I keep okay. track of what's happening. Like You knew what, he was coming out, so knew, you're like, I better get there at I, four. Yeah, I knew that he really wanted one and that it was coming out. And so I did the research on my own. Love will have you do some crazy things. I'll tell you <laughs> I that. I guess so. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. I can't imagine a woman doing that for me in a million years. I did I it would love twice. that. Twice. <laughs> I, I know. I fucking twice. So who's Same the guy now? Same guy? Different guy. Was it also a we? No, okay. it was um, also yeah. Because I was gonna, I was gonna say, say, why would you have two the, I think you just want to get up at four in the morning and wait for Best Buy <laughs> to open at that point. No, no. <laughs> she just loves the deal. No, um, this one was when Nintendo made like the mini console. Switch wasn't Switch. It was like a remake of the classic Nintendo. Oh, like one it, of those. Uh, what do they call them? I don't fucking know. I'm not some dork. It was like a retro console. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking yeah. thing. Okay. And that one, you didn't. You could probably could have went in there at like 10 a.m. and gotten that. No, not when I needed it. I had to go to two different Targets, one in Eagle Rock, and then I met some guy in a parking lot, and that's how I got it. It was like, 
drug deal level of trying to get this fucker a Nintendo. <laughs> Sounds like a like an Arnold Schwarzenegger '90s movie where you're trying to get your <laughs> kid a toy at Christmas time, Jingle All the Way style. Yeah, that's how it felt. Oh my lord! Except it was a forty year old man. So how jokes on me. <laughs> 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 How did they not marry you immediately? I love a 40 year old who loves a gaming console. Console, that's my thing. <laughs> and then you think that that would stop me from dating yet another gamer, but I doubled down and dated yet another gamer no, after that. The gamer of all gamers. The gamer probably. of all gamers. <laughs> the king gamer. The yeah. gamiest gamer to ever have lived. Dare I say, the final boss <laughs> of gamers. <laughs> And then I said, that'll do. <laughs> no more gamers for you? Oh, no. I'm hanging up my gamer hat. Yeah? What now? Unless the dick is fire, but let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> is that correlated, you think? I don't, I don't think. Speaking of which, Twitch will be back coming up here in the fall. <laughs> Twitch.tv slash Josh underscore Potter. Uh, keep that in mind. We don't play any dork games, though. We play sports, all right? Football? Yeah. So, like, I'm a jock gamer you're right. a jock gamer anywho <laughs> that makes that makes it better yeah no it does trust me uh but josh allen's gonna be on the cover of madden this year so we have to play a whole new season of that so that'll be coming up this fall just thought i'd throw that in there while we're talking about gaming uh <laughs> next up though this is a fun video from t-bone Being forward you want to always be erect when you make contact <laughs> It's no. true. Not the other guy having to say it's true. That was me that said that. Oh, you did? <laughs> 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 that was the joint I smoked earlier <laughs> kicking <laughs> in. <laughs> um, <coughs> Play it again. To say fully erect? Well, because here's the thing. There was a lull in talking after Keith Hernandez of the Mets broadcast. Former player, by the way, and a, and a raging party animal. He's the man. Uh, so he's talking, he goes, what, play it again, because I didn't even really hear forward, you want to always be erect when you make contact. Now, I love that silence, because what that means is, and you can't see it, but that means everyone else in the booth is like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now they're all looking at each other, and he's like, and they're like, <laughs> He's like, yeah. <laughs> He's like, and so they let's see if they move on. Like a telephone pole. What? <laughs> it's, is that Keith Hernandez making it worse, or was someone trying to help him? Like erect, like a telephone pole. You know, like uh, uh like a tree. Like not like a, a tree dick. trunk. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like not a dick. He was trying his best. Let's see what the article says here. During the top of the second inning. Of the Mets' 3-0 loss to the Blue Jays at City Field, Keith Hernandez was seemingly breaking down the art of hitting with Toronto catcher Alejandro Kirk at the plate. Kirk, with two outs and 3-2 count against the Mets, starter Justin Verlander awaited the pitch, and Hernandez on the broadcast said uh, what we heard him say. Let's see if I can play. Uh, aha. You want to always be erect <laughs> when you make contact. He was subsequently greeted with dead silence, other than the natural sound of Kirk fouling off a playoff pitch. Exactly 10 awkward seconds later, Hernandez added, like a telephone pole. So it wasn't. <laughs> sure, let's roll with that. The Mets were held scoreless after eight innings, so maybe uh, heeding some of the Hernandez advice would have been helpful as they were shut down by ex-Met Chris Bassett. You got to keep... Uh, he wanted to probably say something about like keeping the bat straight. You want to keep that bat... Uh, Fully hard. <laughs> you mean <laughs> fully hard? Honestly, would have been better than erect. You want it to be throbbing, mm -hmm. pulsating, pulsating, a real veiny bat. <laughs> 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 oh boy, let's get to the news. What do you say? Hell yeah! News time. <laughs> Oh, boy, oh, boy. So many reports coming in. Show at gmail.com is where you can send them if you'd like to as well. And this kind of harkens back a core memory. An article, Another article from T-Bone, who did a great job. So did Luke Rutz. So many articles from Luke Rutz. You probably heard me mention that T-Bone was really filling up the uh, 
the email, and he sent in like a whole slew of them. We've got Luke Rutt's co- uh, articles for days, but send in yours. I love getting some new blood in here. Uh, so in this story, a 12-year-old boy in Washington State fell into a well during a recess what? on Tuesday afternoon. Friday officials or fire officials in Marysville, Washington, said in a press release that firefighters initially responded to a 911 call at noon when they discovered the boy was inside a well. Did Lassie come out and be like, what's that, Lassie? (laughs) Timmy's in a well. (laughs) According to officials, the boy said he was standing on the concrete lid of the well during recess when it collapsed, which sent him down into the well. The firefighters found the boy holding onto a plastic pipe about 20 feet down into the well, adding he was partially submerged in water and unable to touch the bottom. (gasps) While suffering lacerations to his head, the boy was uh, conscious and able to follow commands. The boy was able to come back up after firefighters lower down a ladder to the well. Officials say that the boy was taken to the local hospital where he was listed in stable condition. Um, that's a nightmare. I have anxiety. Like, now I'm putting myself in the position of the mom. Your kid's in the fucking well. Well, this happened to me. This is why it unlocked a core memory. I did this exact thing at my- fell into a well? At my Aunt Jean's cottage. I don't remember how old I was. I think I told this story on a very old episode of The Honey you were a well boy. Well, I I uh, oh, no. I I was walking. I was this getting is firewood. So sad. This is this, this is, is worse than the moat. This is crazy, Josh. Go on. Well, so I'm a child, and uh, I was getting firewood, and I walked. The well was like just in the woods, and it was like that, where it had a concrete top, or it had a slab. I think this one was metal, but when I stood on it, it wasn't latched. So it turned and I fell in it and it actually like closed on top of me. And my sister, thank God, saw it and went and got my grandpa. And I was down there for, I don't know, 10 minutes while she went to go get my grandpa. And I felt like I don't remember how many feet, but it was enough where I couldn't like reach my arm up to grab another arm. So my grandpa went to his truck and got uh, a rope. And then he, like, lowered the rope down. He came and got me. And I was, like, crying and shit. And he's like, that's fine. You're going to get out. Like, I was, like, wedged in it. Mine, this well was very no, very skinny. No. So, like, I was kind of wedged. And because uh, it got thinner as it went down. And it was very uh, dry. It was, like, the middle of the summer. So the water, I could see the water way, way down. But I wasn't down that low to go touch the water, thankfully. Uh, and my grandpa lowered the rope down. And I grabbed it, and I just sat there holding the rope, and my grandpa's like, climb. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I can't pull you out. (laughs) And so he's like, I have to stand here while you, I have to anchor it. So my grandpa yelled at me while I climbed up the rope. No. And then he was like, what the hell are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. Oh, my God. I thought of that. I was like, that happened to me. It's just like when you're a little kid, you jump on things, you know, you step on things. Dude, you don't fall down wells. I mean, what do you think statistically how many children have fallen down wells? This is also like, it feels haunted. It feels haunted. Isn't that like the ring? There's a well in the ring. Well, you're thinking the classic age old Hansel and Gretel type of maybe not Hansel and Gretel it's a Jack and Jill they go up the hill to fetch the pail <laughs> of water Jack falls down you know bumps his crown is that what that means it was well related well you know they're Jack going to Jill? fetch a pail of water from the well I presume but yes they have the wells where they're like stone and they have the bucket and you're thinking of that whole thing yes not I don't know us wine chanks haven't been around too many wells <laughs> I'll tell you that you don't get too many wells in the, in the San Fernando Valley well the well at my aunt Jean's cottage was a little bit more industrial looking and it Ooh. had uh, th- that's like the ring well those ones with the stones and everything like that where she crawls out uh, <gasps> but the well that my aunt Jean had was a little more industrial and it was not very tall it was just this like red cylinder in the woods and I was like haha and I jumped on it and fell right through it oh and my- then wedged my little body down in there that is so scary if your sister didn't see you you oh, may not be oh I'd be here dead now. yeah no I'd be Death and by a well? Because I don't even know, like, if my, say my, like, I was alone, and they came, like, looking for me, and they had, like, you know, dogs, and they're like, Josh, you know, they're walking through the woods, like, with a search team. Would they have even heard me screaming? i am in here Out of the, the well. Because the <laughs> lid closed back up on me. So. That is a fucking nightmare. So I have well trauma. <laughs> yeah, as you should. Got a little well trauma. 
you know? Well, you've been wronged by the well. Keep the buckets away from me. He's a well boy. I'm a, yeah, little baby Jessica Josh. <laughs> Wait, Do you what ever remember baby that? Jessica, she went in a well and never came back. Do you remember baby Jessica? Pull up baby Jessica cuz that one there was like a, uh, an old made for TV movie that I used to watch about baby Jessica. She got wedged into a well. And they had to like the the firefighters had to like break her bones to like get her out. Okay, this this is too much. Because she was a baby, so she went down into the pipes of it, you know? How does a baby get in the well? I forget. What does it say about baby Jessica? How did she get into <clears throat> the well? Did her mom, her mom she... was walking by an open cas- uh, <laughs> an open well and just dropped her it on just it? Just in, in her aunt's backyard as well. Uh, she was like 18 months, and it said it took over 56 hours to rescue <gasps> yeah. her. Yeah, it was crazy. It was a huge oh, story, baby she's Jessica. 18 Lord. months? This was 9-11. Before 9-11, baby Jessica. Dude, is Jessica- Never forget. She, she never recovered, I bet. I think baby Jessica got hot. What Can we see baby Jessica now? <laughs> I think baby Jessica turned into a babe. I mean, I think she did porn. I don't really know what happened Whoa, if I got stuck in a well, would I be into porn? Probably. I'm making that up, I think, but that'd I'd be sick. I'd fuck my way out of that well. If baby Jessica had an OnlyFans. Um. Mm. <laughs> she's she's I. She's I. I mean, is that is is that the most flattering picture we could find of baby Jessica? That's like middle She's aged just a Jessica. Small town girl, falling in wells. I thought she turned out hot, but I guess that's just the made for TV movie. That was version. what, yeah. You know how in the made for TV versions, everyone's so much hotter. Yeah, of course. <laughs> like they um, got Sydney Sweeney to pay, play baby Jessica. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no lie though, I was just in a hotel room uh, watching HBO, and they made a show called. It's called reality. I the, watched it. Okay, so you saw this. I had no idea what this was about, and I'm watching it trying to figure out what it's about, and I had to go to the show, so I didn't get to see like the end of it, and I'm in the in the Uber on the way to my show, Wikipedia, this movie, going like, what the hell was this about? Because it's yeah. just like an interrogation the whole yeah. time. Yeah. And it's about like the whole like, you know, Trump Wh- election or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Yeah. And this woman, reality, her name is reality. I can't think of this. Fuck. It's like- um. It's reality. It's something where you go, is that a person's name? Name, yeah. Or is that like a fucking organization? It's like reality. Uh, um, God. I can't think of it either. And I just watched the show. It's like just reality in, with Sydney Sweeney. Type in reality movie and it'll come up. And yeah, so I go, who's this chick playing her? And it was Sydney Sweeney. They covered up her tits, so I couldn't tell who she was. <laughs> and uh, then they I put figured her in out. like a sports bra. Yeah, they had her in like a button down dress shirt. So I'm like, who's this pretty girl? And I go, oh, it's Sydney Sweeney. I didn't recognize her without her tits. And then um, she has the best tits in the game. And I go, she's this girl's hot. I go, is this is the real girl hot? Well, pull her up there. You just hovered over her reality something or other. Oh, her name is Reality Winner. Reality yeah. Winner. It's like I thought hell? it was summer. Exactly, because okay. you go Reality Winner. I'm like, is this some sort of uh, Slumdog Millionaire type situation where, like, Reality Winner. Who would make that their child's name? Someone who lives in Georgia. Isn't that where she's from? <laughs> Click on her. I That's... don't know. Let's call her Reality. Or she's from Texas. Reality winner? That's I'm like reading a, an article about her. I'm like, are they talking about someone who won Survivor? <laughs> or what? Like, is this Kelly Clarkson? Like, what are we talking about here? Also, her middle name is Lee. So it's Reality Lee winner. Reality Lee winner. I mean. It doesn't even rhyme. I mean, it's just. It doesn't go well. <laughs> reality, you get in here. You clean up your room, reality, or you're losing a privilege. And there she is. I don't no, like it. She's no Sydney Sweeney. No. If I do say so myself. That's what happens. They get the hotter version. Can't uh, abide such idiocy any longer. They could have got someone, and they're like, no, 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 no. Like, Sydney Sweeney. What about when like, they like re- <laughs> Sydney Sweeney. <laughs> when they recast Tanya Harding, they put a hot chick in place, too. Tanya Harding was kind of hot, though. Mm. Kind of. Like, in a brute way. In, like, she scary. Yeah, but that's kind of... See, there's, like, a part of that scary lady that tickles Josh. Oh, yeah. One thing about Josh, he <laughs> loves a little bit of a scary lady. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like a, a intense... Little edge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. You gotta have an edge if you want to get with the roach. Yeah, a little... Uh, something that just tickles my fancy is just a... <laughs> Frightening woman. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Well, speaking of uh, reality winners, 
mm-hmm. if you will. These ones, though, these ladies are pretty hot. And this is coming to us from T-Bone. Female prison guard update. It's because we talked about this woman at some point. But what I found interesting in this article is it gives us an entire litany of female guards who hooked up with male prisoners. She's now, so pretty. Right? You should I'm- not be allowed. Now, I, I know we're you know fighting for equal rights and people should be able to do whatever they want as far as occupations go, that woman should not be allowed within 100 yards of a jail, okay. let alone working <laughs> within one. I mean, like, what if she's into into inmates? Uh, clearly, she was, because she oh, fucked one. That's the whole the story. She has the face of someone who's there to, for inmate dick. I bet it's good. I bet inmate dick See, is the best dick in the game, because they're fucking like their life depends on it. You're not the first guest on this program. To bring that up. Really? Really. Well. Prison officer Roxanne Walker, 34, was spotted by colleagues giggling with manipulative, I like how they put that in there, inmate Daniel Carter at HMP Berwyn in Wrexham, Wales. She later confessed to police, I've made a mistake. I've fallen in love with Daniel Carter. It's completely wrong. It's the latest scandal at the 250 million pound category C adult male prison after Jennifer Gavin, 27, Aisha Gunn, 27, and Emily Watson, 26, were all jailed within the last three years for sparking relationships with prisoners. Stop hiring women! (laughs) Idiot woman! (laughs) I mean, good God! And in this article, it shows the pictures of the others. It's like the guards are going, let's hire these babes because they're kind of hot. It's nice to be fun to look at. But it's not necessarily effective as far as the inmates go. They're all manipulating them to fucking them. So there's there's one. What are we scrolling so slow for? We just want to get a good... I mean... That's the first one. Yes, we've seen yeah. her. I feel like... This is one of them. I know this is going to mm-hmm. sound... These are the ones we just named. Whoa, whoa. All right, we're getting a little worse. <laughs> She's pretty cute. The first two definitely have filler, and they're looking to fuck felons. <laughs> filler and felons. Do they go hand in hand? <laughs> yeah. Like, I need big DSLs for when I get to jail. <laughs> At my day job. My day job. I mean, I don't know. I mean, prison dick scares me because it's like, where has it been? In the prison, it's been it's probably the cleanest dick you can get. I mean, unless no. they're fucking dudes. That's what I'm saying. Oh, you think they're fucking dudes too? How are they not? I think you can. Some of them can kind of get by without fucking dudes if they're getting the guards to suck them off. But I feel like if you're in prison and you're a dude, at one point, if you're in prison for twenty years, right? At one point, do you get fucked in the ass? Well, at one point in twenty years, is it your decision? Are you saying you get fucked in the ass uh, because you would like to, or because someone else deemed it so? <laughs> Somebody else deemed it so. Yeah, so then what are you worried about, uh, you know, the manipulative ones? I'd imagine they're just cranking it. (laughs) Cranking it? Yeah, they're they're not really doing any. Yeah. Really? I think so. I I think most people in prison are butt fucking. You think 100% of prisoners are fucking each other's butts? I think 90% of prisoners are butt fucking because it's like... 90%? (laughs) Is that wrong? I mean, that's a high number. I don't know. I'm just assuming that's a wild assumption and i don't know that you're not i don't know that you are wrong but it's not something i would assume think about it this way josh Mm -hmm. okay no pussy in sight yeah okay that's a lot of my outside the jail life so (laughs) (laughs) doesn't mean i'm necessarily clamoring for the cheeks of a man yeah but i don't know did you ever watch orange is the new black i did well well women are a little more susceptible to some bisexual activity yes you think a hundred percent i don't know uh can we talk about last time we were in austin yeah 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 (laughs) fall in love with strippers (laughs) so what it happens from time to time sometimes a beautiful woman will have you questioning whether or not you're a full lesbo and i can sit here and quite honestly say have not had that happen what do you think matt healy thinks i think i think matt healy more makes out with dudes for, for the attention. uh yeah for the like clout yes and the like whoa of it you know the That's, shock and awe yeah like a like a girl in college making out with a, another girl for attention yes that's what he's doing exactly calm down healy calm down all right we get it 
you know? You want to piss the Swifties off. Well, you did. Well, listen to this. 18 female guards have now been fired or forced to resign for having illicit relationships with inmates at this prison. Dude, they have fetishes. But who's hiring? It's the same prison. It's like, does this happen at every prison? This is 18 at the same one. Dude, they just got that good prisoner dick, or is it like the women that they're hiring are fucking daffy? What I'm thinking is there's like a secret Reddit thread that happens where all these uh, <laughs> these women meet up, and they're like looking for felons oh. and they're like and then they hey. go through a elaborate training course <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what i think all you have to do is go to school for like eight years mm-hmm. and get and get your criminal justice degree and then get assigned to this prison but like do you to be maybe they just all have like felon kinks Something maybe like it well these guys are very they, they even say in the article that they're manipulative oh an inmate manipulative? Even just a guy in general. Maybe just <laughs> e- they're extra manipulative because they are inmates. Yeah, because they have to do what they need to do to survive. They got that inmate manipulation, not just your average gamer <laughs> getting a fucking <laughs> getting a lady to go sit outside for a wee for a few hours. <laughs> not the inmate instinct. <laughs> what do you think she's sitting outside for a few hours for just to get a fucking cell phone into the jail, you know? She's got a cell phone in her pussy for the f- felon she's fucking. Perhaps that would be the least of her worries. Uh, he said she undertook a 10-week training course, which included corruption prevention and conditioning. But between May and October 2021, several of her colleagues became concerned about her behavior towards the inmates. On one occasion, she was seen on closed caption television grasping and stroking his arm. <laughs> And giggling, so not just his arm there in that case, as well as talking closely to him. Mr. Rothwell said colleagues saw her sitting on a sofa with him. They have sofas in prison? Jesus. Having an inappropriate discussion about a night out she'd been on. Yeah, sounds like my, it's better than my apartment in prison. (laughs) Yeah. She told one of her fellow guards that Carter was her type. What does that mean? The uh, inner city blacks. Was that your type lady? What are you talking about? (laughs) In August, Walker was spoken to in a support meeting and said she was disappointed that her colleagues had reported her. Oh, okay. (laughs) Let me fucking peace. These people are uh, these people are British. So she goes, uh, she goes. She claimed it might have looked a bit dodgy. To others, but the relationship was just platonic. Okay. The court heard that the relationship continued despite other warnings and advice. In September, Carter's usage of the prison's phone system was investigated, and it emerged he'd added a female called Leanna Baker to his list. When people make fake names, they love using the last name Baker. He said this was, in fact, Walker, and it turned out that there had been numerous calls between them over a period of weeks in which they talked about going away together and engaged in sexually explicit conversation. Do people not realize, especially employees and inmates of a jail, that all prison phone calls are recorded and listened to? Is that not? I mean, what the fuck? I don't know how it works, really. What do you mean, how does it work? All the phone calls in a jail, people are listening to. It's a tale as old as time. But can't you get a secret phone? Like, I remember, I think George Perez was telling me that you could get, you can figure out ways to get phones. Sure, cell phones. But this is not, this is him using his calling list, giving her a fake name, being like, add uh, Leanna Baker to my list. And then they'd be like, okay. And then it was her. And so they were listening in on these calls. And figured out that it is her, in fact. So they were listening to these calls. Do you think that they got off on the fact that people were listening to their phone sex? I mean, I think these people... What would you... I mean, I don't know the last time, or even if you have, but what if people heard your phone sex? Yikes. Would you be excited, (laughs) or would you be... I just said yikes. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely not. So, I don't even want to hear my own phone sex after it's over. Like, I want to pretend it never happened. To be clear, not an excited yikes. A disgusted yikes. Yikes. <laughs> no, yeah, disgusted. I mean, I haven't had phone sex in so long. I did I did, like, propo- I did. propose phone sex to a girl I was seeing recently, and she was like, what is this, the 1800s? <laughs> <laughs> Phone sex, well, like FaceTime sex. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, I was like, well, no, FaceTime sex is like, 
That's like fucking gross to me yeah yeah it's, it is. it's like, like i it's, don't want to see your dick on facetime i don't want to see my dick on facetime so it's like <laughs> i phone sex there's I don't something see my vagina on facetime either it and is then just it's like a, you got to get the lighting right you're in your head because yeah you're like, and you gotta my like pussy look okay you gotta prop the phone up and like get a good angle <laughs> tripod I mean, the lighting yeah. has to be right you're turning on the ring lights you're fucking dude i would need 78 hours notice <laughs> if we want to have phone sex and we're dating give me 78 hours notice but just audio you could be like you know laying on your couch in sweatpants eating popcorn and have phone sex yeah i did that in high school i haven't done that since high school high i was school, like Jesus. horny and i was like yeah i remember being horny in high school and i had my own phone line and i had a boyfriend at the time and we just like have phone sex thank god you had your own phone line because i used to have <laughs> you know i'd have the one where like every now and then my dad would pick up and be like dad i'm on the phone no <laughs> that would be mm. wild if that was like my parents got so annoyed with me because they didn't have call waiting so i would tie up the landline <laughs> mm, you were one of those girls and i was like why don't you guys get call waiting and they they were so anti-call waiting they said i can only talk to one person at a time yeah but call waiting even if you had call waiting you would still be on the phone and if you heard like the skadunk would you have even checked it no exactly not if i was mid phone sex with john <laughs> paul my lover at the john time. paul <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a guy at a high school named Jean Paul. <laughs> His name was John Paul. Was he eight? Was he 40 years they old too? They called him JP. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's funnier to say Jean Paul like that. That's so funny. Oh my God. <laughs> like, who's this Frenchman? Oh, that's so Dude, funny. Dude, I was so obsessed with him. I tried to make, I wanted to make him a cake for Valentine's Day, but my baking skills weren't up to par. So my little sister made it for me. And then I pretended like I baked it and then I brought it to him. And that's not so bad. Your yeah. little sister did you a solid. That's all. Yeah, I should thank her for that. <laughs> <laughs> Remember back in the Remember day? Remember when you made that heart shaped cake for Jean Paul? <laughs> I'm just trying to see if there's any more salacious details in here. With this prisoner story? Oh, this lady was married the whole time, by the way. Her marriage was in difficulties, and this was perhaps a vulnerable time in her life. She was a target and was indeed conditioned. The relationship, whilst serious, didn't progress physically. Ooh. Only some arm rubs, evidently. There was a very good reason why, during your induction and training, significant emphasis was placed on the importance of having appropriate relationships with prisoners, said the judge. The security of the prisoners and the safety of the staff, prison discipline and the safety of other prisoners and all placed are, are all placed at risk when officers fall, uh, fail to be controlled by the prisoners. Oh, okay. Or fall to be controlled by the prisoners. Well, whatever, judge. Yeah, the inmates are running the prison. That's yeah. rule number one. That can't happen. <laughs> right? Isn't that a saying for a fucking reason? Yeah, the inmates are ruling the asylum or whatever the case may yes. be. Yes. Oh, boy. The asylum. Well, I have some good news. I like to wrap up the show on occasion on a good note, you know, something that's positive, uh, you know, a good story. <laughs> she knew exactly which one I was pulling up here. Look at Kirsten. It's like she can read my brain. Hell Sweden yeah. declares sex a sport. This coming to us from Luke Rutz. It's not not many. a sport, I'll tell you that, sweetie. Well, now, guess what? It's an official sport. The first ever sex tournament is set to take place early next week in Sweden. What do you say? Want to hop on a plane? <laughs> a sex tournament? Yeah. <laughs> Named the European Sex Championship, the competition is scheduled to take place on June 8th under the supervision of the Swedish Sex Federation. That sounds <laughs> nefarious. What weird. the hell are they doing in Sweden and when can we go? <laughs> <laughs> I've got to see what this entails. Is it a bunch of different events or is it, uh, you know, I won the golden blowjobs. <laughs> Participants in the championship will compete for six hours each day over the course of many weeks with individual matches reportedly lasting 45 to 60 minutes. Well, holy hell. I guess that disqualifies many a folk. It says no, Sweden did not clear the sexist. Oh, is this a fucking joke? I was trying to find the Swedish uh, sex federation and it turns out we've been duped. Luke Rutz. Oof. He Oof. puts a mar on all his... God, Luke, I wanted to end the show on a positive note, and we couldn't have ended What's, it on a worse note. Why can't we just 
say that sex is a sport. It's exhausting. Well, you need to hydrate. You need to stretch. Well, the reason why I fucking thought it was real. <sighs> I'm angry all of a sudden. Hold on. We just gotta. Let's just. You know, we just gotta fucking climb. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm back. I had to go to my dark Happy place. place? Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I the reason I thought it was real because recently, you know, Adriana Chechik, a world renowned porn star, has been speaking on the fact that pornography is so, a bit of an athletic endeavor. It is kind of like uh, a sport in that, you know, their bodies go through. A bit of uh, wear and tear, if you yes, will. Yes, <laughs> exactly. And so um, I just assumed that, you know, the fine forward thinking folk in Europe might have taken this to the next level. Yes. I don't know. It does seem like something that the Europeans would do. Like in France, like if there was a sex tournament, you'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. If they said this happened in fucking Nebraska, I would have been like, that's horseshit. But no, Sweden, <laughs> who knows what these freaks are doing in fucking Sweden? You know, all these blonde hair, blue eyed, fucking the, hot people. Yeah, they're the extra kinky ones. I'm going to give Luke the, Rutz another chance. Those though. Swedes. <laughs> they are the extra kinky ones with their meatballs and their IKEA. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they make those the furniture the way they do, so it's easy to break. It's collapsible under the stress of sex. You can just fuck right on it. Well, here's a good one that involves a potential uh, a case of. Um, well, <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah. What? Oh, oh, murder. Yeah, get ready. <laughs> I didn't even say anything yet. Everyone's we're laughing. We're ready. We're ready. Cauliflower cheese turns to assault threats. That's hell of a headline. That's... Is this one horseshit too, Luke Rutz? <laughs> it best not be. I would, I think I would go King Kong if somebody gave me cauliflower <laughs> cheese too. What the hell does that mean, King Kong? That's a what he said. I know. That's <laughs> what I would, a down end, a down end man who knows where that is in England probably became so enraged when he was served cauliflower cheese on his birthday. He turned into King Kong. <laughs> court her. I thought you just made that up. I was like, that's a funny way to describe it. <sighs> Timothy Robinson looked dead in his eyes, telling his partner, "Do you want to see the real <laughs> Timothy?" <laughs> oh my. Saying that and pulling out a, a knife. <laughs> With that, she described how, looking like King Kong, he began snarling, took a bread knife out of a drawer, and held it four centimeters from her face. Mercifully, a friend of the couple who had come over for tea grabbed Robinson's arm, but Robinson managed to grab her throat and squeeze it. The 46-year-old of <laughs> Dibden Clo uh, of Dibden Close pleaded guilty to two assaults strangulation assault occasionally or er, occasioning actual bodily harm and threatening with a blade <laughs> judge michael longman jailed him for two years and nine months the judge told him you have behaved violently towards her on different occasions all the offenses are made more serious by the fact you were affected by alcohol at the time the offenses were in her home, and the offenses were committed in the context of domestic violence. The judge imposed a restraining order banning Robinson from all contact with the complainant for five years. Lucy Taylor prosecuting outlined a catalog of offenses admitted by Robinson. These included events on his 46th birthday when Robinson became enraged, looked like King Kong, and put a knife to her throat. They don't talk about when he went off, though. Where she, was, he, was it like that Chris Farley sketch? Where he was like eating the cheese, and he's like, "This cheese is really good." And she she goes, "You'll never guess. It's actually cauliflower." <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, "What?" <laughs> he just Do you want to so see the pissed. real Timothy? That's such a crazy thing to say. Do you want to see the real Timothy? <laughs> but also, like cauliflower cheese, I get it. That would make me want to shank a bitch too. I wouldn't have even. I would have been like, "What the hell is this?" <laughs> gravelly horse shit. Do you ever see that sketch though with uh, Chris Farley? You know what I'm talking about? I forget what it was about. It was about like it was the coffee, right? Yeah, it was he goes. The, it was yeah. This coffee is great. He goes. 
what if I told you you're actually having caffeinated crystals or something like that? It was like a fake coffee. And he was like, what? And he like breaks the table and everything like that. He freaks out over it. Oh, that's what this reminded me of. Only he was going to commit domestic violence to his wife in this case. They didn't do that in the sketch, unfortunately. Would have made it that much better, I think. It's also <laughs> like, do you think leading up to the cauliflower cheese incident there were things boiling up well he it was says like here, uh, this bitch gave me lentils last week and now she's giving me she's giving me cauliflower cheese today what else are you gonna try and trick me with you stupid bitch <laughs> <laughs> robinson strangled the complainant until she went limp gouged his fin- gouged his fingers into her eyes and head butted her several times to the head. Miss Taylor said she suffered bruising to her face, and Robinson made her stay home, telling her to say she had COVID. That doesn't work anymore, Pally. The COVID excuse? Get with it. Yeah, what is it, three days now? You can't get away with the COVID. I wonder if in real jobs, if they're even saying that, like, can you still call in with COVID to your real jobs? Who knows, because I don't have a real job. Yeah, we don't have those, so it's... <laughs> The court also heard that between October and November last year, Robinson pinned the complainant to a sofa with his knee and stabbed at her uh, to her to the chest and upper arms with a flathead screwdriver, causing bruising but no puncture wounds. In an impact statement, she said that she feared Robinson would kill her. Well, stop making him fucking cauliflower cheese. If that's going to set him off, give him the real cheese. You know what I'm saying? If you know he's prone to violence... <laughs> Give Maybe him you cheddar. give him, the, yeah. Put the cheese in there. Give what him you, a little Tillamook. I like how she's trying to save his life through uh, culinary ways. Just let him have the cholesterol if he's trying to slap you in the head with a screwdriver. <laughs> she stated how after this arrest, initially she struggled on her own, but she went on to say she began to feel better and took more pride in her appearance. She wrote, "I feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders." Well, it literally has. <laughs> he's no longer able to pin you to a couch. I never want to go back to that life. Alex Damon, defending, said he has been in custody two months and he has detoxed. It is accepted he has pretty serious alcohol problem. He is thoroughly ashamed about the way things have gone. He says his behavior towards her does not reflect the kind of person that he is. But holy fuck, cauliflower cheese sucks. No, that part I added. Well, now I kind of want to try it. Cauliflower cheese? Yeah. I've had it. It's not. You've that had great. cauliflower cheese? Yeah, you know, you date a vegan bitch here and there, and they <laughs> fucking. Dude, same with me. I've, you know. You've dated the vegans? I fucked a few vegans in my days, and then I realized tempeh is not for me. Tempeh? What's that? The... It's fake meat. Is it really? Tempeh, seitan. It's like. Here's the seitan. thing I never understood. If you're a vegan and you don't want to eat meat, that's fine. But why are you eating things Fake that meat? are like meat? Franken meats? That's yeah. What, that's what my neighbor who's vegan calls her. She calls them Franken meats. I never understood that. It's like you are obviously making a choice that you are anti meat by being vegan, right? The concept of it. Well, maybe they So why like... would you want to like fake it? Because maybe they like the taste of meat, but they're animal activists and they're like, I don't want to sacrifice bacon. God, what a horrible prison of a head you must live in if you like the taste of meat, but you're so anti it, you must be vegan. You can't even wear a goddamn boot because it's made of leather or something like that. You know? Dude, I remember I was dating a vegan and we got into a fight and I knew I was about to break up with him. And he, I said, he said he was going to go get me something to eat from Whole Foods and ask what I wanted. To, and I said, chicken. And that's when you knew you were gonna break up with him. I knew already. I wanted to break up with him, oh, and then I just see. to stir the pot. You wanted to really irk him. I go give me some chicken. <laughs> yeah. He picked the worst meat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the worst meat. <laughs> yeah, the chicken one that the, is. He's like, I don't even give a shit about chicken. <laughs> Those, <laughs> <ones you know. laughs> Those dinosaurs. Should have picked a cow. <laughs> Those, they're basically lizards. They're so gross. Yeah, they are fucking just, they just shit on each other. Chickens don't seem like sentient beings. Speaking of gross foods, I want to end on this one. This is a good story. This mm-hmm. comes from Paul Schiff, and I actually got this sent in by many of Roach Reporter out there at Josh Potter Show at gmail.com. That's why I wanted to get to it still. A New Mexico Sonic employee has been arrested after allegedly losing his bag of cocaine while preparing a hot dog, police say. Authorities say a 54-year-old Jeffrey David Salazar was arrested Tuesday in Española after a woman found a bag of white powder inside her order. Who's telling? (laughs) 
if I find that, I go, okay. a little bonus in my Sonic order here. What am I going to rat them out? Doesn't cocaine seem kind of high end for a Sonic? I mean, sure, but this is in New Mexico. Oh, okay, that tracks. I don't know. I mean, cocaine is out there. I mean, there's people that work at a Sonic that have high-end tastes, you know? Well, they're like, let's do lines and then put together these burgers. Yeah, I mean, if you're working at a Sonic, do a couple key bumps, make some hot dogs. Sounds like a pretty sweet life. The woman, identified as Celine Gonzalez, a.k.a. the narc, told police she <laughs> discovered the baggie after taking a bite of her hot dog. Officers say Gonzalez then spit out the bag, but didn't say whether she <gasps> ingested any of the drugs. So she bit into it. Into it. So I would be like, yeah, there's a bag of something. I would be a little nervous of maybe that it's not coke. It could be fentanyl, yada, yada, yada. Crack cocaine? But I'm not telling the cops. It's not crack. It's regular cocaine. Or but you say don't crack? fucking know. Like, if I bit into a hot dog and then there's a little baggie of white powder, that shit would trip me out. I'd be like, sweet. I'd be, I'd be like, like, I wonder what it is. I would try it. You would? Yeah. Just You would try a rogue bag of white powder? Here's the thing. If I was at all inebriated, I would have tried it. I've done I mean, I didn't have a rogue. But you got to test it. I had a... Uh, a guy, it was at a gym stakeout in Buffalo, New York, which is a <laughs> sub shop. And, you know, used to go there after the bars closed late at night at 4 a.m. And I had a guy, he goes, $10 and I'll give you some, some Coke. And I was like, hell yeah, dude. And I, just some random guy. And he gave me this napkin of white powder. <laughs> and I went into the bathroom and I did some of it. And it was not Coke. It was not anything. I guarantee it was like granular sugar. Like it was like flour or something. It was something nothing. And I remember I was like, maybe I'm too fucked up to know. So I like took it home and I showed it to my roommate who was well versed in these sorts of things. And she was like, this is fucking bullshit, dude. (laughs) What are you doing? That's so crazy. No, I know. I'm not a smart man. Idiot man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to add that one to the <laughs> You can use my voice. Yeah, we're going to just I'll use it. To you, yeah, we'll just use that one. That'll be good. <laughs> no, I was I was dumb. But that's not to say if I found it and it was in that little bag, if I would have just done a little, just to see. One little, in this day and age, could cost you your life. <laughs> Don't you see those fentanyl? <laughs> Don't you see those fentanyl billboards? All it takes I don't is know why true? you're laughing. Just a little bit of fentanyl <laughs> could eliminate you from this planet. Just a little bit. It's not worth it. Now, let me not to get all like out, mad you, mother. On hear that. me out, YouTube. All right, yeah. don't get mad at me or anything. But is that true? Yes. <laughs> fentanyl is everywhere. No, no, no. I know, but is it true? Are they trying to? Is it like scare tactics? No. That like this little teensy beansy bit is gonna kill me. Why? Play Russian roulette <laughs> no, with a of white ass powder when you can get a fentanyl test. I mean, I don't know. I well, here's the thing. If when you I took did it all back, the drugs, I was in my twenties, and fentanyl <laughs> was not yet a thing. Sames. This is all. I mean, this is the story I just told about the rogue powder was before any of us had heard of fentanyl many yes, years ago. Yes. But I'm saying, what if you took it back to the guy and you were like, "Hey, not for nothing, I found this in my hot dog," and he was like. Oh my God, my Coke. And he was like scared. Like he was like upset or like happy that you got it back for him. Basically like <laughs> saying that he was like stoked about it. And then you're like, oh no, 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 no. You yeah. keep it. It's a little oh, bonus. Oh, yeah, Cause yeah. Because you know you get the reaction from the guy. You want this? Yeah. You don't get, have it. You don't get, I either you get to keep your job and I get to keep this or oh. I'm telling on you. I mean, also, like, who wants a hot dog and then cocaine and then a hot dog? You do cocaine, the last thing you want is a hot dog. Especially because, yes, that's a great point. Wowie. That is actually a wonderful point. <laughs> cocaine and a hot dog? Ew. <laughs> that sounds actually disgusting. <laughs> the woman said, I think that's pretty scary. We come here to get food for our families. If a child found that, it could have been pretty bad or deadly. I don't. I think it's a little deadly that you're taking your kid to Sonic for food <laughs> on a regular basis. You know, I've I mean, never been to a Sonic. At the end of the day, eating I hot dogs go. as a giving your kid hot dogs on a regular basis, you might as well let them snort a little fentanyl too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that is true. You're not wrong. 
In a court filing, officers claimed the surveillance video from the restaurant showed Salazar frantically searching for something that he lost after making the order. Oh, my Coke! It's in the hot dog! <laughs> they put everything else in there. That's... Hooves and snouts and whatnot. <laughs> Throw in a bag of Coke. Salazar then admitted to investigators the drugs belonged to him, and he told them that he bought them from someone in the Sonic parking lot. Following the incident, Salazar was arrested and charged with possession of a controlled substance. Española is a town located around 90 miles north of Albuquerque. Well, that's good to know in the article there. Thank you very much. I feel like most drug deals happen in Sonic parking lots. I was just going to say... Maybe I should go hang out in some Sonic parking lots a little bit more. <laughs> I mean, good golly. I didn't think that was a hotbed of drug activity, though in New Mexico. Who knows? A little bit of hot dog, a little bit of Coke. That's a great way to end the episode. So do tell us where you'll be, where people can find you, when plug does anything. This come out? This will be out on Wednesday. Oh, shit. I'm going to be at the Hollywood Improv tonight, 8 o'clock in the lab. I'm going to be at the Bourbon Room Hollywood Saturday and the Improv Saturday. I have a bunch of dates at Princess Shank on Instagram. I post all of my dates there always. And then you can find me on Shank Podcast, which comes out on Wednesdays too. And then on This Bitch every Monday. And then um, I'm coming to Mic Drop Mania in Arizona, Chandler, Arizona, June 23rd and June 24th with Kim. Four shows, two shows a night. So get tickets because it's going to sell out. It was a fun club. I just was there myself. I'm excited. Thank you so much, Sarah. Now, if you want to see the old roach here, I'm going to be with Annie Letterman in Salt Lake City coming up at Wise Guys this very weekend. Uh, on June 20th, I'll be at the Comedy Store for the Annie Wood and Friends show. And then uh, I think it's the 23rd, 24th weekend. I'll be with her in San Antonio, Texas. So I uh, hope to see you there getting some headlining gigs for the summer uh, up and running. We're definitely coming to Soul Joel's. In the fall, I got La Jolla Comedy Store set up. Uh, that's happening in December. Hell I'll yeah. give you the details on that later on down the road. And uh, Tampa Bay Side Splitters, those tickets are on sale, even though I'm coming literally Christmas week. So, I mean, if you want to buy tickets to Tampa Bay, they are on sale. But uh, I figured I'd promote them after the summer and all of that. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching the show. And please to be subscribing if you haven't done so already. I noticed we had a bit of a burst in subscribers. That's always very cool. Keep it coming, my friend. And also, if uh, you can rate, review, if you're on the audio, that'd be cool as well. The Patreon's up and running. Patreon.com slash uh, the Josh Potter Show. Pleased to be joining that. Only five bucks a month. Otherwise, what else? Josh Potter Show at gmail.com. Send in all your emails, whether it's an article, it's a musical number, the way that Odd Track Numbers sent this bad boy in. Or you can always just let me know how you're doing out there. I appreciate it a great deal. And we will see you next Wednesday right here on the Josh Potter Show. Can't uh, abide, can't uh, abide, can't uh, abide, you idiot woman! Can't uh, abide.